Okay, we're doing a beam uh, bending example today. Uh, to do this, you definitely need a copy of the AS1720, which uh, has the formulas and all the tables and various things in it. So you need a copy of that with you. Uh, I'd also recommend you print out a copy of this, which is the capacity of a timber beam sheet, AS1720, 3.2. But this, of course, is all in the code, so you don't desperately need this if you don't want it. But we'll use that as a reference. And uh, it doesn't hurt to have refreshments or at least some chocolate nearby as well. Uh, you'll need a pencil and eraser unless you're an eternal optimist. So the problem we're doing today is we've got a, t a roof beam in a house. And it's across a six meter room. And it's a relatively flat beam. We're going to take it as flat for this purpose. And it's in orange. So we have a dead load from ceiling and roof sheeting and so forth of uh, 0 0.5 kPa. Our wind analysis will have told us that we have a 1.3 kPa wind load up with a five second duration. And because we're in orange, we get a snow load of about 1.25 kilopascals down, obviously. And being a non-alpine area, that's a five day duration. So the combinations we're gonna, load, we're gonna go through uh, for the loads are 1.35 times the dead load, 1.2 times the dead load plus 1.5 times the snow load, that's acting down, and then 0.9 times the dead load and uh, down and the wind load acting up. And those come from AS1170. So to summarize, it's a roof beam, it's an orange. Now this roof beam is supported, uh, has battens on it at 900 millimeters, uh, 900 millimeter centers, and that comes into play later on in the K12 factor. And we're going to assume that this is one roof rafter in a series of lots. Um, it's a set of parallel beams and they're going to be spaced at 900 mil apart. So first thing we'll do is we'll set out our calculations. So this is the CSU example beam. I'm just going to change my pencil and come back to you guys.